as adults, Liam purposefully proposed to Olivia to publicly humiliate her for rejecting him, him as a childhood boyfriend ah, because he was too black. I remember this story. Yes. Welcome to Glass House Moments. Today, our guest, Natalie Roche. Hi, Natalie. Welcome Hello. to Glass House Moments. Hi. <laughs> We're going to be having a very real, raw, and relatable conversation about her experience with sorrow. And sorrow is something that all of us encounter in our life. So we're going to look at our own our, our, our journey as to how she took her sorrow and tagged a purpose to convert that into purpose. So stay with us as we discuss life. Absolutely. We'll be right back. So Natalie, tell me a little bit about your experience in meeting a friend who became someone that was important in your life. But from what I understand, when you first met this person, he was not your type. As women, we all have a type. Exactly. <laughs> but however, you admired certain traits about him, like his desire and drive to mm -hmm. be ambitious and to be uh, a legend in whatever it is that he was doing. and. Um, to me at his age when I compared mm -hmm. him to the other guys that I would have been dating yes they had no long-term okay. vision at that point in time and, yes you know understandably they are young they're exploring life so they're old, when fun. you say young what do you mean 26 old was he? and in that time mm -hmm. and I'm not talking your average 26 year old no because yes. it's a different age we're in I understand um at that time at 26 most people they were focused on working a job and entrepreneurship was not something that was common among us so he had this dream of becoming an entrepreneur exactly and mm -hmm. being a legend in his industry so not just a regular entrepreneur and <laughs> that's admirable exactly. very admirable and I, I found that that was like a big turn on for me so you found that it, it, that very sexy it was very sexy okay it was what well, us sexy. women can relate exactly. to something like that we find something it was yes. indeed sexy and so watching him come here even even when he did not have the support mm -hmm. of the family of his family to see his dream and his purpose being realized yes I saw that he had something to contribute to society yes and to increase mm -hmm. and lift the respect that has been you know labeled on the culinary industry okay and so being a culinary artist aka a chef is not something that was the leading skill or career that you would find most people leaning towards back then because guess what it is a artistic skill it is not in your necktie job kind of a thing it's not your corporate job mm -hmm. it's not bringing in the big box they would think so it was not flashy so it was not a flashy career mm -hmm. but for me being an artistic and a creative person it it allowed me to also see that there are possibilities in what it is that I could do mm -hmm. um, even though I could not figure out what I wanted to do yes then, but you knew that you had a creative passion that like sort of matched something. mirrored what he had exactly okay. so mm -hmm. and so seeing him in that light watching him creating a whole new and a whole new platform mm -hmm. of the culinary industry and the culinary arts the respect level that it is at now it is really because of what he brought here also okay. he brought a level of appreciation for food fusing foods from different caribbean cuisines and mediterranean cuisines to make it what it is today. and how long ago did this happen this happened in 2007 he started his so journey this is like 13 right 13 so years. he started his journey in 2007 and mm -hmm. everybody was raising the brows at the type of food that he would look like you know everybody used the Jamaican yes. cuisine, and them yama and them we, we, as a people we don't welcome new things no we don't <laughs> and so I I regardless of whatever my experience has been with him for over the decade plus I still salute mm -hmm. him I respect his craft and I respect the passion that he kept so dedicated to regardless of Mm -hmm. the lack of support in the previous times before he now became this 
celebrated mm -hmm. culinary artists. Yes, it is in indeed. And did did you in any way um, feel and pulled to actually help him yes. in his trust to become and a legendary chef? I in the initial stages because you know I'm a sociable person. And yes. I've always been in the social circle mm -hmm. and I thought that my personality mm -hmm. um, would help to bring to the table the connections he would need. Because chefs are usually reclusive, you know, people Very. see they are behind and the scenes. And he was shy, so yes. he was more focused on building his brand mm -hmm. and focused on his passion and creating. So I'm the free spirit, I'm the roam about, I'm yes. the butterfly. and. Um, my personality i have matured to realize that it is adaptable and 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 i do pull people to me yes and that in a, and of itself helped him the administrative part you know we started out with a lunch delivery service and that was in aid of marketing his catering services oh so, nice yes so that was the plan he's really he's really one you what you call uh, one of those people very innovative right mm -hmm. and so actually my mom was the one who gave him the idea when he was so, the, so other that's nice so the family was behind it right. did you have children at this point no we had no so at this then. point there was no, no intermingling children. or commitment this is, this is just one creative person to another exactly um, helping him we actually got into a relationship mm -hmm. um like about a couple months after okay and uh, but the relationship was always in my head space i don't know whether we're coming or going okay so we'll, let us take a break right yeah. here I want, before we we get further into the juicy details of the coming or goings of the relationship yes we want to thank you so much we'll be right back don't move Welcome back to Glasshouse Moments. We're sharing with our guest Natalie Roach, director of Converse Over Cocktails. Today we're talking about the story of her life, the story of her called Sea of Sorrows. And she's about to share with us the comings and the goings of this relationship that she had with another creative and of what they were cooking up in the kitchen. I thought it was only um <laughs> well, a lot of things were cooking. A lot of things were obviously some cooking. Bad stews were going on. Okay, so we in gonna, our personal kitchen. In their personal kitchen, yes. while guests on the whole outside were enjoying the delicious, delectable delights. So we're now going to talk to so Natalie. Tell us a little bit more. So you're stirring up all kind of bad things in your personal life while you are supporting him, and he is obviously very attached or into you because whatever the crazy connection between you two was there was that that sort of thing tell us about that i think the attachment was that we're both creative that was the attraction because yes. more over an attachment mm -hmm. uh you know sometimes in your youthful years you are not cognizant of yourself and the way in which you deal with people mm -hmm. who have a weakness and then you tend to trample on their weakness and so while I was there encouraging his strength mm -hmm. and helping to build on his strength he was tearing my tearing me down with my weaknesses so I now became not good enough and because I'm a creative person and most creative people tend to have a attention deficit disorder mm -hmm. it's very strong in us mm -hmm. it could easily lead to our destruction so both in of you were basically of suffering with the same weakness. He wanted your attention, whether from you or the outside. No, I think he, I th okay, so he's coming from a family where he has these women who are movers and shakers and mm -hmm. they're up in the corporate and they're doing well and they're doing so and so mm -hmm. and I'm here grappling with myself, mm -hmm. trying to figure out, because I was not interested yes. in a university degree. Mm -hmm. I started and I stopped. Mm -hmm. I realized that is really not where it is that I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I, it was hard for me to figure out me because yes. I had a lot of ish to deal with from him. Okay. And so it now became apparent that I was not good enough. Mm -hmm. um, the disrespect started. Mm -hmm. And the anger that I started holding inside now became a bottleneck of 
explosive mm -hmm. an explosive of emotions just bearing out and then my weaknesses and my anger made me a weaker person yes mentally weaker. mentally weaker i became drained and then it got worse when mm -hmm. our first child was now born okay so you brought a child is that all the comings and the goings all the comings and the goings mm -hmm. and even with that i still because then when my child was born he had a he had a he has a chronic illness okay and so that really made things a lot more difficult mm -hmm. so you have to put on the mommy game face while you're struggling and battling yes. another personal issue that you're having with the father and it's toxic it's filled with a lot of pain Whoa. a lot of disrespect mm -hmm. disregard and he didn't have the lens to see that, that you were battling both as a mother and now as a girlfriend and not recognizing that his actions were, were making me mm -hmm. a worst person and it is also in coming out of that i learned too that you teach people how to treat you mm -hmm. and i taught him very well how to treat me at that time yeah because i wasn't treating myself well mm -hmm. had i been treating myself well then maybe that situation wouldn't have occurred yes but the long and short of it is i take the blessings and the lessons from that yes. because it has propelled and prepared me mm -hmm. for where i am now had i not had that experience i could not you be sitting could not. here with you i agree so do you think when you say that you teach people how to treat you do you think that also another thing is that people will see a weakness in you and keep jabbing away at it do we or do you think that these two factors played out into your relationship with this guy so that factor is something he's very strong and jabbing at your weakness mm -hmm. i realized that I, and it's not just me he's had others who he has he has done the same thing to and some have come back with the same effect of you mean not, with other girlfriends yes also not this was not a naturally specific no it was it, this so this no is i realized that this is the character of this individual okay you understand mm -hmm. so i realize he does like strong women but yes. he uses he looks for their weakness mm -hmm. and he plays on them mm -hmm. and before you know it you walk away feeling like you have no worth mm -hmm. no value no nothing yeah but in the same breath he will tell you that he means you well and he wants to see you do well but his actions defies what he says mm -hmm. and you find that a lot of time people say things out of their mouth because it sounds good to say and it's easy to say but the application yes is not there they don't know how to yes and because it has become a part of them mm -hmm. you become their victim okay well, I doubt if somebody who hates you is going to say, especially if you're in bed with them, going to say, Natalie, I hate you. But I think what I'm taking away from this is that we need to be more in tune with people's actions versus Self their words. Which is why mm -hmm. I have convos over cocktails. Yes. So should we take another break and then come back yes, for, the con for the conclusion of this when Natalie will tell you how she has tagged a purpose to her pain and self-awareness is now her game so stay tuned we'll be right back thank you for staying tuned so we're back so natalie was about to tell us how all of her experience with her ex has really prepared her had she not gone there we're not saying that you have to suffer pain to find purpose but we're just saying that Oh, when you suffer pain instead of wallowing in pain you can learn from your pain and tag a purpose mm -hmm. to it so Natalie mm -hmm. as you were saying mm -hmm. condos over cocktails yes so condos over cocktails became the birth child from my experience with him and it started on the journey of self-awareness I had to go through I had to do some real self-evaluation mm -hmm. and critical analytics about me and who I am and my purpose in life because when I, when everything was over yes. I came to a point where I started questioning my worth yes 
I started questioning why I'm here. There are days I, mm -hmm. I, I, I would wake up disappointed that I'm actually alive. I wish to God that I never existed. I thought I was a, a no good person, a no good mother. I was not worthy of love. I had no value. Mm -hmm. But I realized that I was internalizing a lot of the bad energy that I was picking up from the environment of which I was in. Mm -hmm. And when you project, when you start to become a product of your environment and the energies you're receiving, mm -hmm. if it is good, it's going to be real good. And yes. if it is bad, it's going to be real bad so you were surrounded by just bad energy exactly. and, you were just and it got worse because i started soaking it up mm. so bad bad energy it gets bad energy yes you understand mm -hmm. you will whatever it is that you receive it is what you're you're, you're giving off and yes. vice versa and, it, and i think it, it, it sort of multiplies so you receive bad bad energy you take it in you multiply it and, and you, give it back and out you're spewing so yes. that anger got real and then you know i thankfully it's good to have friends who are unbiased mm -hmm. and have an objective view and outlook on life and so I had to start surrounding myself with women who have had similar experiences and used it to pursue their passion and this is why sharing your stories okay, is so important. important because sometimes just one person out there which you can't tell by looking because I'm sure by this time when people saw you, nobody would imagine what you're suffering nobody inside. Nobody understood. Yes. Only myself. And then it got to a point where it was affecting my health. Every yes. minute I was not feeling well. One morning I woke up and I couldn't feel the left hand side of my body. Mm -hmm. there so you were not having physical symptoms? I was having physical symptoms from the stress, the anxiety and the depression I started suffering from. Mm -hmm. And the depression started for... I'm telling you, I was in depression for almost 11 years straight. But in this time, from what I remember, you have another child for him. For mm -hmm. him, And you're saying to me, what I hear you saying is that from child one, the relationship was bad. Or it was bad. So how did another child come into play? That Natalie was a very weak minded person yes she operated under the premise of chaos mm -hmm. and when you're in a chaotic situation you can't, no decision you make will ever be the right decision to make mm -hmm. and you will never be able to make sense of the decisions you make <laughs> and all manner of things will reach you yes but you know i don't regret my children I don't Thank regret God. having that yes. experience because the experience I had needed to teach me something about myself and yes. that is I did not love me enough. There was not, there was self the opposite of self-love. did not like me. Mm -hmm. I had placed everybody before me. Yes. Everybody and I had a tendency where I wanted to do everything to please everybody mm -hmm. and in doing so I created more enemies for me than I created friends for myself in trying to help people How and do you trying, create enemies and when you're trying to help? It's to please people. To please, okay. And so mm -hmm. therefore I realized that the way I would respond to situations one would believe I'm full of hate and vitriol Yes. And I could understand now, sitting from this angle, why it is that they would believe that I am filled with hate and vitriol when that was not really the case. Yes. I was burdened, I was overwhelmed and loaded with a lot of hurt that I was not letting go of and I didn't have an outlet mm -hmm. to release the pain that I was feeling. Yes. So therefore, any situation, it became combative with me and because of my fiery temperament and I'm ready to get onto my throne and start a fight. <laughs> Uh, that became me <laughs> fighting became me anger became me and let me tell you something anger weakens you yes. anger weakens your ability to thrive and strive in life yes. anger holds you back mm -hmm. a lot of times we hear forgiveness is a gift to self and it sounds cliche but it really is it's and so what I've started to do was to evaluate me. There are lots mm -hmm. of things about myself that I discovered I didn't like. But I now yes. embrace it because it's what makes me Natalie Roach. Yes. It is what makes me the person that I am now. Mm -hmm. And I am still on that journey yes. to knowing self and discovering self. Yes. And I am now picking myself up. Mm -hmm. So now that his career is gone, because while he was elevating himself and getting mm -hmm. there, I was shrinking. Mm -hmm. And I started I'm wallowing in your hate. You're, you're, you're wallowing in my hate. Him, but hate him. for self. Because yes. what happened is that when you hear things on the road that he says about you, mm -hmm. and it diminishes your, your integrity, it diminishes your self-esteem, mm -hmm. it diminishes your self-worth, 
mm-hmm. you start to feel like you really are nothing because yes. you know you become convinced by your limitations by your weaknesses you don't see that you're able to do anything yes and you are not able to conquer and to be anything or of anything great mm-hmm I allowed those things to affect me. So they really got into so it they on the inside. It. And, and you were vibrating all that negative energy. Exactly. And so. he must have been having a field day to see oh, that he could, he could push your buttons. Oh, one, Lord. One. And then he would talk about me with all the ladies that he gets. And I was the worst person. Absolutely. And I was yes. the worst person. They would less. fall for it until they suffered um, at his hands. Oh, no, yes. <laughs> the same stick that stick, sheep stick, goat. Yes. <laughs> you know? I, I, even with everything that I've experienced with him, I don't hate him because I've had to take responsibility for my actions. Yes. And what I have allowed to happen mm-hmm. in my life. And that's a very important par- um, point, Natalie, that mm-hmm. I want to li- to leave with our viewers. Mm-hmm. Is that even when bad things are happening to us, we have to take some amount of culpability in that. Self-accountability. Because sometimes, most times, we sit there like innocent bystanders and allow bad things, people to do bad things to happen. You're in a job that you hate because your boss is awful, but you stay in that job for 40 years. Nobody because kept you, you there. Because you need a salary and you think that there's nothing else out there for you. So we limit. We limit ourselves. You're in a relationship with a man who is mentally or physically abusive, but you sit in that relationship feeling helpless. Because you think there's not a better man out there or you can't do it on your own. And you are responsible for the pain that these things inflict on you. Yes. I had to take my own sense of responsibility so that I could free myself, Ah. forgive myself, forgive my perpetrator and move on in love. And it is still a journey. Mm, and it is still a journey. Because it's not something that, oh, you flush it down. Yeah. So it's not going to happen to you again. It, it does happen. It does life. occur. It's life. It, and it happens. Life is a recurring decimal. So we have to be careful of our vibrations yes. and the things that we're pulling onto ourselves. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, so. Converse now, tell mm-hmm. me about the message of how does Converse um, help? Um, those that are, have suffered with a similar fate of self-awareness or self-hate um, as you did, how do you offer help through Converse Over Cocktails? Primarily in the initial stages, I started it off as a, a subtle form of a woman empowerment group where I would do an intimate setting mm-hmm. and invite some of our public figures that are true mm-hmm. and authentic because not all of them are. So I, my, my energy, where my energy was, I was looking for those who I could identify with, who mm-hmm. are openly honest, yes. not fabricating stories to win accolades. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yes. But people who actually really had a story, and in the story they are being grateful. Yes. Um, because you know, we have the typical cliche experiences that are not necessarily very truthful. Yes. We have to fabricate stuff to, to get the likes. Mm-hmm. And so in inviting these people on the forum, they've been able to inspire mm-hmm. and to help even myself by sharing their by story. sharing their stories and how they were able to get out of it. Absolutely. And some still going through it, but they're on the journey of changing that. Mm-hmm. So I wanted other women to be able to get that experience, that real experience. Mm-hmm. And so it is not glamorized by your material acquisition because success is not about the two point odd homes that you have up on the hill and the one point odd car that you're driving. Mm-hmm. It is about going through the rubbles, the thick, the, 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 the thorns of life mm-hmm. and coming out victorious on top. Happy. It's happy. about internal Your joy. Internal happiness. Mm-hmm. And happiness is probably one of the best medi- medicines that yes. human beings could ever priceless. get in their lifetime. Priceless. And it's priceless. But I moved away from that because I realized too that there are women and mm-hmm. we as women we have also created a lot of what is going on and we've created our own experiences. Mm-hmm. And that is because there is a falling out between the man and the woman in the society. 
Yeah. And so the men started asking me, why are you doing this one when there are so many women who from around the men yes. now needed a space. Even myself was space. asking, what all of this with women empowerment? Exactly. If they get any more empowered, it's going to blow And I decided to stop because what happened is that we started marginalizing our men. Mm-hmm. And even with my experience with this guy, it never made me bitter towards men. Mm-hmm. I have two boys. And yes. so, therefore, I had to be careful of what it is that I started and it's very feeling. very important perspective, Natalie, because mm-hmm. I didn't even consider the whole thing that you were mothering two boys for this man who, once you surrendered, sort of overpowered you and defeated you, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But you had two boys that you had to be a model mother to. 24-7. How did you keep that focus and that sanity i didn't it was difficult i tried i put on the game face and i was just failing at it even though some will say you did a fantastic job Mm -hmm. what is really the measure of a fantastic job Mm -hmm. there is really no measure to say you're really doing great yes the fact that i had to i would i would use i would use my boy's happiness as a measure but that is what i was just about to say the fact that they are happy children Mm -hmm. and they're healthy um is what shows me that I think I have done a good job but then it came to a point now where I had to deal with me mm-hmm. I had to stop being mommy 24 7 and start dealing with Natalie yes and so when their dad's business started taking off and he was doing well now he was in a position to, to take help with them. some of the mothering so to speak so he well he can't help with mothering I mean but the parents the parenting so yes. he had more time because yes. he was not around in he was initial. busy Pursuing. Building the business in the initial so, stages. And you see, everything works out for a reason. Yes. And there are times I do feel guilty not being around because my job was being a mommy 24 7. They come home from school, who them say mommy. Yes. If I'm going to work because I work for myself, they would be with me. So everybody knew me to have my boys yes. with me. So now they're at daddy and. I know that they, they, they suffer from the lack of not having no mirror. The 24 7 yes. 27, 24 7, but they are supported, well supported, because the good thing is that he has a good family unit, nice. a strong family unit. Mm-hmm. And to me, the only thing that matters is my children's happiness. I don't care if he doesn't like me. <laughs> I don't care if he I wants to that- tell the whole world that I'm a horrible mom. Because I, I'm not comfortable in your skin. In my skin. Mm-hmm. What's new? Very self-aware and growing more. What's new? Yes. Well, this is this Natalie. I'm glad that you said that because there are a lot of women out there, even men. So this is not just a woman thing. Because some men have been abused. Oh yes. By by women. Which as is well. why I opened it for for men. men. You're, that's the converse over cocktails. Right. Because people out there that are suffering are no respecter of gender, mm-hmm. and so you can take away from Natalie's story that anger and hate will only um, bears more hate. And more anger. And so you have to get to a place of joy and self-love in order to conquer your what enemies. And people out there are are are, are some, some of them they, they get a kick out of knowing that they are almost narcissistic. They get a kick out of knowing that they can push people's button and make them feel bad about themselves. It has nothing to do with you. And as a matter of fact, it makes them feel like they are the boss when they mm-hmm. realize now that you have lived up to the words that they that have spoken, spoken about you. Oh, sounds like God. Let there be light. Natalie's a loser. She's losing. Yes. <laughs> so we want, So in conclusion, Natalie, I want you just to talk to our guests a little bit more about Convos. And to me, the, the message of Convos over cocktail is a tremendous one because like what we're doing here which is sharing natalie's story with you in the hopes that someone this will will be able to relate to it and get the help that they need that's what glass houses is all about and so the today's interview was inspired by the leah Mm-hmm. And Olivia's story, yeah. which is in Glass Houses too, which is called Cold Feet, Cold Heart, and it's a story of uh, uh, of two young people who were who grew up as kids, and were supposed to be dating as kids. But at first, she rejected him to say something like he was either too black or she didn't like something about him. But he never forgot that one act of rejection. And so, as they matured into adulthood, and she had long forgotten 
about that careless line that she might have said, he held it dear to his heart and was very, very determined to exact revenge on her. He later proposed to her with the, with the hopes of embarrassing her by either leaving her at the altar or rejecting her, breaking off the engagement the day before their wedding. So people do are narcissistic. Yes. They are. And when you come upon those people, sometimes they, they, they are able to hide. Because they shift. They shift into different forms of who they are yes. to confuse you because narcs work well with confusing people. Therefore, mm -hmm. you can't identify. And this is where the emotional intelligence aspect of who you are comes in. You have to have the spiritual intelligence mm -hmm. to know that, listen, I've detected that this person is not for me. This person is a narcissist yes. or he's a sociopath. Or a psychopath yes he or she because it goes both ways right I am not for this and this is not for me so I am going to remove myself I'm gonna because you myself. can't change no them or you can't you change, can't anyone, change your stance. But you can change that's the only person and that's the only thing you have control over mm -hmm. you absolutely you and your decisions I believe that's a great note <laughs> for us to part on until another glass house moment we want to thank you so much for being with us and Natalie we want to thank you so much for coming to be with us and sharing your story in such a real raw and relatable way until next time Mary saying peace out shalom thank you bye bye